Let's do another example. Let's say that we have a site Okay, here's a point, here's the water table, this is a rock. Let's say this is a well graded gravel, something like that. Okay, this is six meters, this is two meters, and we have gammas of 20 kilonewtons per meter cube and 22 kilonewtons per meter cube. going to put here comma 22. We know that the largest one is below the water table because the soil is saturated. And let's say that K is 0.5. Okay? And let's say that we want to determine determine the shear stress on a plane that is sh shown in the figure. So let's say that we want the shear stress that acts on this plane. Okay? And this plane is oriented twenty degrees from the vertical like that. Okay? So we want to know the shear stress acting on this plane the first thing we do is we need to draw the more circle because we realize that this is a plane that is not a principal plane and therefore we need to draw the more circle to use it to determine the tau that acts on that plane okay so to, the, to draw the more circle which is the tool that we're going to use we need to determine the principal stresses okay so the principal stresses are the vertical and the horizontal stresses. Now, in this problem, as you will see later on, you will you don't do not have to determine the principal effective stresses, or uh, sorry, the principal effective stresses and the principal total stresses. You can determine either or, okay? And so what we're going to do is we're going to select to determine the total stresses, total principal stresses. Okay, you'll see later when we finish this example and we go through uh, what is the difference between the effective stress more circle and the total stress more circle. So, sigma 1, sorry not prime, we could determine the prime but we're going to do just for an example here the, the total stress. So sigma 1 is the vertical stress, okay, so, <clears throat> sigma 1 is equal to 6 times 22 plus, I'm sorry, 6 times 20, 6 times 20, this is the dry part, plus 2 times 22. And this is 164, right? This is 120. This is 44, so 164 kPa. Sigma 3 is equal to what? Here, many students would say sigma 1 times 0.5, because sigma horizontal is sigma vertical times 0.5. That is incorrect, because the, the lateral uh, coefficient of lateral effective, the, sorry, the coefficient of lateral earth pressure, K, is a ratio of, ver of effective stresses. Okay, so we need to determine the effective stresses before we calculate the uh, the horizontal total stress, which is sigma three, the minor principal total stress. Okay, so sigma one prime, which is sigma vertical prime, is equal to 164 minus the pore pressure. The pore pressure is 2 times 9.81, which is 2 times 10, which is 20. So 144 kPa. 
sigma 3 prime is therefore 0 0.5 times 144 okay and sigma 3 uh, which is this one here sigma 3 is sigma 3 prime plus the pore pressure 20 okay so what is this this is uh, This is uh, 72, and this is 92 kPa. Okay, so now we have our major stress, principal stress, and minor stress. Okay, now we can draw the more circle so that we can determine the shear stress on this plane okay so here I have uh, my grid paper we're going to draw the x-axis okay and we're going to draw sorry we're going to draw the y-axis Sigma, not sigma prime, just because we are drawing the more circle of total stresses. Okay. Now here we need to make sure that we have the proper range so that we can draw a nice more circle. So this goes from 92 to 164. Okay. So here we can say something like Here we're going to have to say something like uh, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 30, 40, 50, 160, 170, right? So 120, this is 180. Okay, so we can actually start here, not zero, okay? Even though we would prefer to have zero, zero, it's not, an, it's not a, a requirement. What is a requirement, though, is that the distance of 20 be kept. If it's kept here, it has to be kept here. So, <clears throat> let's see. 0, 20, 40, 60. Okay? Now, very important. The, the y-axis does have to start the origin has to be the start of it, that is it has to start at the origin so here we have minus 20, here's 20 okay okay so going back to our numbers 92 and 164 right 92,0 164,0. So 92, 0, 164,0. These are our two points for our initial element or initial point, which is the principal stress state. Okay, so those are our two points joined by the line. Everything is good. Now we can draw the more circle. So to draw the more circle, we need the compass, right? We need to set it up right at the middle. So in this case, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to... Okay, it's a little bit bigger than that. We're going to try to do it by eye, just using the compass to determine the size. If you have a nice compass, this would be very easy to do. Okay. Remember, hold on to the paper and then just be patient. Tilt the compass a little bit. Okay, first process, first, first uh, step. We draw the point. 
we draw the plane in this case the plane is like this 20 degrees there right and we want the tau that acts on this plane all right good number two we draw the element that is associated to the principal's stress state here we have 164 and 92 okay let's continue to put the happy face okay now we need to shade one side of this element so that we can align it with this plane okay we can shade any side if we wanted to shade the top side we would basically turn this element like that so clearly in this case you would want to shade this side because that way you can just rotate the element and now it looks like this okay so number three is to shade we already did it number four is to align okay so here's our plane and now what we need to do is basically rotate this element so that it can be aligned to this plane so we're gonna grab it rotate it clockwise and now it looks like this I rotated the element clockwise how many degrees? 20 degrees, right? 20 degrees 20 degrees once you have this then you are ready to rotate the line which line? the line that corresponds to this state which is the, hor the horizontal line in the Mohr circle this one you rotated the element 20 degrees clockwise therefore you're going to rotate this line 40 degrees clockwise right? 40 degrees clockwise where's the middle? the middle is right there how did I determine it? because I saw the the hole made by the compass okay would be a what it would be wiser to actually make a little point there so that you can remember where the center is or calculate it given the the ends or measure or whatever right okay so this line is rotated 40 degrees clockwise to determine now these two new points okay this point here this point here has coordinates of a hundred comma twenty two and this one has coordinates of one fifty three comma twenty two minus 22 okay so notice notice that again we have basically estimated these values by reading the plot if, if you use the equations you can calculate the, the actual values but for geotech it doesn't really matter one or two kpa is not going to make a world of a difference okay so we that's why we use the more circle and we read off if we actually draw this very well as, as we have done here we would be very close to the actual value when we actually read the, <clears throat> the plot okay so the question is what is the tau remember what is the tau that is acting on that on that plane on that plane inclined at 20 degrees what is that tau what is it well it's either 22 or minus 22 but which one is it well we shaded this side right we shaded the side with the 92 on it and then we rotated the element to get the element to align the side shaded side to align with the plane so we selected the 92 side that is this point and we rotated clockwise 
So this point uh, eventually made it here, let's say. The point doesn't really move, but we can say that it moves just for the purpose of saying that this is our new point. So that, that is the shear stress that acts on our plane. Okay? Now you may say, well, how do I draw it? Do I draw it? Um, do I draw it like this, or do I draw it like this? Does this mean positive or this one? Well, it depends on what you want to call positive. It's all arbitrary. You can say, well, I'm going to take all shear stresses that produce a clockwise rotation of the element, I'm going to take those as positive. So in that case, you would draw it like this. You would say tau equal 22. Okay, KPA. That's it. So as you can see, using the Mohr circle is not rocket science. It's just following a set of steps. But most important is to understand that the Mohr circle is a tool. It's nothing else. It's just a way of determining stresses at a point. And the beauty of it is that it tells you, once you draw it, it tells you all the stresses. And you just have to find which one which one it is, the, which one is the point along the Mohr circle that is associated to the stress you want. In this case, that point right there is the one we found to be associated with the stress that we wanted. Okay, let's look back at this. This was our calculation for, or calculations, for the stresses, remember? So we said that the stresses Principal and uh, principal ma major and principal minor total stresses were 164 and 92. And here are the principal effective, the major principal effective stress and the minor principal effective stress, 144, 72. Okay? So let's draw those stresses on this space. Let's try to. Okay? Here I'm going to put sigma, comma sigma prime to, to, to note here that I'm going to draw another more circle that is associated with the effective stresses. Okay? <clears throat> the major one is 144, the minor one is 72. So we have 144,0 and 72,0. Okay? 144,0 is right there. And 72,0 is actually on this side. It's not negative because here I started with with 75, 80, sorry, with uh, 70, 80, 90, right? Oh, 72 actually is here. So this is 70, and 72 is there. Okay? Now, if 72 were on this side, you would realize that it's not negative just because I started the x axis here at 70. Okay? Remember that you can, you can, shift this x-axis back and forth, it doesn't matter, wherever you want to put it, but the spacing uh, between, or the spacing between tick marks here has to be the same as the spacing between the tick marks here, and the y-axis, the tau axis, has to have the origin crossing the x-axis. Okay? Make sure that you understand that. So here's 72, here's 144. So we can do the more circle of effective stresses. Okay, now look at that. We have the two more circles. The more circle of effective stress or effective stresses more circle of effective stresses and the more circle of total stresses, the one we drew before. Okay? That's for one point. Which point? That one. Okay? 
Notice that here they overlap, that's fine. But the Mohr circle of effective stress is always either on top of the Mohr circle of total stress or to the left of it. Okay? What is the distance between them? Well, the distance between them is the distance from here to here, which is the same as the distance from here to here, right? So, 164 minus 144, 20 kPa. 20 kPa. Where's 20 kPa here? Pore pressure. You see that? So the difference between the more, more circle of total stresses and the more circle of effective stresses, that is the distance between them, is U, is the pore pressure. If the pore pressure at a point is zero, then the more circle of total stresses and the more circle of effective stresses is the same circle. That is, they overlap, they are right on top of each other. Okay? So that's something to think about. Okay, so with this we have finished the, the stresses section, or stresses, uh, the, the lectures on stresses. Just make sure that you are able to follow the steps one by one. Remember the steps here with the happy faces, etc., shading the sides, or this side that is uh, easiest to deal with. You don't have to, uh, just in parentheses, again, you don't have to select an, a specific side. You can select any side, and then rotate the element to align that side with the plane in question. Uh, just be, be able to, to, uh, to do this type of problem, which is to determine any stress uh, using this procedure, okay? And you'll be very well off in, in geotech. Now, there are other ways to determine stresses with the Mohr circle that do not involve the shading of sides, etc., right? Um, <clears throat> There, are, for, there is, for example, a very powerful method which uses the pole, something that is called the pole or the origin of planes. Okay, that's just another way to to do what we have done here. Okay, uh, clearly, when you practice uh, this many times, you will realize that you won't have to do all the, you know, every little step one by one and shade the side and put the happy face, etc. But just when you start doing these problems, try to do every step so that then you get when you get more comfortable then you don't have to 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 do every little step even though the steps are actually quite simple i mean it's, it takes no time to do them and if you do them it's it's you are basically minimizing the the probability of of error okay so the idea here is that uh, please don't be scared of the more circle the more circle is something that is very powerful it's very simple actually as long as you realize what's going on when you use it, and that you realize that it's just a tool.